which is the least muscular division. However, winners are dictated from the back shot. That in fact is usually not true. While this isn't maybe the most popular division, it is an awesome division to watch it actually continue to evolve and get better over time. You guys all know it, the daddy bumpster. Most commonly, I see the winner of this show choose your bodybuilding division. So you wanna start bodybuilding and you have no clue what division is best for you. We're gonna break down every single division and what division you're meant to do and you fit right in. First off the bat, we're starting with men's physique, which is the least muscular division. However, is it really? This is a division meant for the guys that tend to not be able to build legs quite as easily as the other divisions. This is going to be more of a Y frame. This does not mean that you should not train legs. However, you do not need to have the most muscular legs on stage to win this class. So what are they looking for in this class? Well, this class is going to have wide clavicle structure, big capped shoulders, which is usually what is gonna dictate a winner or not until you turn to the back, which we'll get to that in a second. A big broad chest, and then your arms can't be overpowering, which is something that they have made very clear in this division. Just well balanced, a very good clean look, like. I want to look like that when you look at a guy on the beach. That's what this division is meant to be. And because this is a Y-frame division, having a small waist to clavicle structure is extremely important. Now, every bodybuilding division is still an X-frame, so that waist is that middle of that X. The smaller the waist, the bigger you look. And speaking about being bigger, we're going to talk about your back because having big lats and wide lats is extremely important. Even guys that have bigger waist can make up with a big, massive back and in bodybuilding the saying always goes winners are dictated from the back shot and we have seen this time and time again where the front might be a toss-up even at the top caliber athletes in the world first and second place so in turns the back and it's lights out and next thing you know the show is over so what body fat percentages do you have to be in this division while a lot of men's physique competitors like to claim that they are way below 8% body fat that in fact is usually not true they actually did a DEXA scan one year at the Arnold Classic, and there was only one competitor that was around 6% body fat. While I will say the sport has evolved since that DEXA scan was actually taken, and the competitors are coming in leaner and leaner, usually men's physique competitors come in around 6% body fat to 8% body fat. However, that's not necessarily as lean as they get. Ryan Terry, the winner of the Olympia this last year, was potentially the leanest guy in the entire Olympia. He was bone peeled, and I would argue arguably say around four to five percent body fat which is about as lean as humanly possible as you can get without dying that's a testament to hard work paying off and he became number one in the world right before he was about to retire Thank you guys so much for being a part of the channel. You guys always ask me such good questions and you guys can catch me over on the discord channel where we talk about the fundamentals of health and some of the complexities. For me, it's about giving back to the community and building a bigger one. On the Discord channel, there are like-minded individuals such as yourself, and we're just gonna have a good time. So we'll see you guys over there. Next up, Classic Physique. You guys all know it, the daddy bumpster, Chris Bumstead. He is one of the most famous human beings on the face of the planet right now. And yes, he has a better smirk than even Brad Pitt. So let's talk about what are the requirements for this division. While most people think it is emulate golden era bodybuilding, that's not entirely true. The sport has evolved very much since golden era bodybuilding. But one thing remains intact, waistline, matters. This is the epitome of having an X frame. Wide clavicles, big shoulders, you can't have too big of shoulders ever. It is one of the only body parts that you can just not have too big of. Small waist, and yes, waist matters. That's one thing that Chris Bumstead always has brought to the table, is a tiny waist. Probably most importantly, massive legs, and yes, not just big legs, massive legs. Another very unique thing to classic division is actually the vacuum. While it is not a mandatory pose it is always a massive bonus if you can hit a vacuum in a front double bicep most commonly i see the winner of these shows dictated from the bottom down which is going to be peeled out striated glutes piano line hamstrings and feathering through the quads and this is where chris bumstead has been the king of the sport for a very long period of time now by having the best back shot on stage the third division 212 bodybuilding while this is 
isn't maybe the most popular division, it is an awesome division to watch it actually continue to evolve and get better over time. And my good friend, Keon Pearson, who I had the pleasure of working with and coaching with for a little while, is number one in the world right now, who looks like a mini Ronnie Coleman with no waistline. He has one of the most aesthetically pleasing physiques currently in bodybuilding, period. Some of the best of all time, actually, genetically. Again, this requires an X frame, which he has one of the smallest waists ever in bodybuilding history, considering how much muscle tissue he can hold on his frame. So if you're wondering what the major difference is between 212 and class physique, well, that answer's simple. Most of these guys are around 5'2 to 5'4, and they just can't make a weight cap for classic physique. It's very rare that you're going to see anyone above 5'8 in the 212 division if they're truly at the top of the game. 5'6 tends to be the max height that you usually see with the top guys in the world. They are definitely more muscular than classic physique, and that's the reason why they can't hit their weight cap for it. Which brings us to the next point, the dad of bodybuilding. This is open bodybuilding, uncapped, rev limit off, let's full send it. As big as possible, these are the biggest guys in the world. The biggest open bodybuilder that we have seen of all time was actually Big Rammy. And in the off season, he approximated around 390 pounds. I've seen this guy in person. Most people think that he is six feet tall because of the amount of muscle tissue that he had. In fact, he's probably around 5'9", holding 390 pounds. So what are they looking for in this division? They're looking for overall muscle tissue because again, this is uncapped, the biggest guys in the world. They're looking for symmetry. They're looking for aesthetic appeal, which I want to clarify, bodybuilding got a bad reputation for a bit because the guts were starting to get distended. They have made a very hard statement and reeled this in, and it is a much more aesthetic appeal now where waistline matters. You're still trying to develop an X frame, and guess what dictates the winner for this division again? And usually the legs in the back. The top guys in the world have clear over 30 inch legs at this point in time. Their glutes are striated, hamstring lines pianoed, and the amount of tissue that they can hold on their back is second to none. Now that you know all the male divisions out there, which one do you think fits your physique best? Now that you understand everything about the bodybuilding divisions, which division is for you? If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate a like, comment, and a subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. I want to thank you guys for being a part of the channel. Community is massive for me, and we have a free Discord channel where like-minded individuals, just like yourself, are talking and having a good time. We would love to see you guys over there, and I'll be talking with you guys also. So we'll see you guys soon, and if you guys ever need anything, feel free to reach out. We are available.